Hello. Hi. 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 Um, I'm Janet Hughes, and I'm the programme director for Gov.uk Verify, which is the new way to prove your identity when you're accessing government services. And if you're not familiar with it already, if you're not one of the 275,000 people we've already verified, then you can watch a video of me on YouTube explaining it, or you can try it yourself with any one of these services. And I've published the slides this morning, so click on the links um, and you can follow them. But I'm not here to talk about how it works today. I've done that before for Entrepreneur Country. I'm here to talk about this, which is how we're creating and growing a new market for identity services in the UK through what we're doing. When you use Gov.uk Verify, rather than the government, rather than you interacting directly with the government or its chosen provider, you choose from among a range of certified companies, and they're all working to standards that we've set. And by doing that, we want to create and grow a new market in the UK and contribute to the global market for identity services. So I'm going to talk to you about why we're doing that, how we're doing that, and why you should care about it. So first of all, why are we taking this market-based approach? Well, we think a market-based approach is better for these four reasons. User choice, user privacy, and here's where it gets interesting from your point of view, in the context of rapidly developing markets and threats, and because we want to meet wider needs, not just those for central government, but also those in the wider economy. So on user choice, I've mentioned that you can choose from a range of providers, and these are the four that we have available now. But shortly, in the next few months, we'll have all these five extra providers as well. We signed contracts with them in March, and they're all working very hard to get on board. So by the time we go live, from beta to live next April, we'll have all these nine providers. And users will be able to choose which of those they want to interact with based on either brand familiarity or what they've heard about their performance, or maybe they've got an existing trust relationship with that company. The second reason is user privacy. And this is really important when you're playing in the identity and government and technology space, as we've learned from past experience. Gov.uk Verify means that you provide your evidence to prove your identity to your chosen company, and that company only sends the data that's necessary to the government to assure the government that you are who you say you are. So the company doesn't know which service you're using, and the service you're using doesn't know which company you're using, and it's not possible for any individual player to draw together all the information about an individual. There's no persistent identifier, there's no big database. The third reason that I'm going to dwell on a little bit more is because we're in a context of rapidly developing markets and threats, and that's not an appropriate space for government to be building its own solutions, because they very quickly become obsolete and useless and turn out to be a big fat waste of money. So, Developing threats, first of all, the cyber threats are becoming automated and industrial and organised. And no longer can we rely on things that we may have relied on previously being secrets between us and the user. For example, in the United States, where you may have heard about this, they, um, the IRS made it possible for you to download your tax record. And to do that, all you had to do was answer a couple of questions, which the IRS believed only the correct user was likely to know. Turns out it's actually quite easy to guess the answers to those quite low quality questions. And when some hackers tried to do that to 600,000 records, they had a 50% success rate. And they downloaded 300,000 tax records before anyone noticed. And they've already, so they've got all that personal data about all those people. And so far, $50 million worth of fraud has been reported. But this is a story still unfolding, and we've yet to see the full impact. So that's the context we're in in terms of developing threats. In terms of the developing market, I've used Wardley Map to map the way the market's developing. Is anybody here familiar with those already? These are really useful. I really like them. On the vertical axis, axis is the value chain, and at the top is visibility to the user, and at the bottom is invisible to the user. And along the bottom is the development of the market, from genesis through custom built to products and services to utility. And the way things go is things start out at genesis under this theory, and they develop to utility, and by the time they get there, something's been invented to disrupt the market, and then it develops, and so on. So I've mapped out the gov.uk verify market based on the providers that we have and the ones we know are coming to understand how the market's developed so far and what the future of it is likely to be. So this is how it looked in October 2014. This is when we went into public beta. These are all things which providers have to do in order to meet the standards that we require for identity assurance. And at that time, broadly speaking, there was one set of methods for each requirement um, and one set of data for each requirement. And they were all in the custom-built and a few in the service space. That was October 2014. 
Now we're in September 2015. In August 2015, some of those custom-built things have already moved into the product space, and some of them are already looking like they might become utilities, and we've already seen the genesis of a whole load of new disruptive methods already just in that few months period. So what's next? So that what we think will happen next following this theory is that those new things that are being generated now will move into the product space and new things will be developed. What will they be? Who knows? Because what you can't tell from this model is exactly what's going to happen or when it's going to happen. You can just tell that some things are going to happen. So that's what's going to happen next in the market. And in that context, if we had done what the government used to do, and if we'd set some requirements in October 2014, they would already be obsolete and out of date and would be in a right pickle. So that's another good reason for taking a market-based approach. And the fourth reason is we want to meet wider needs. Identity assurance is not just something that's needed for central government, it's also needed in the wider market. Currently, the cost to the economy of doing identity services is 3.3 billion, and it's been estimated that approaches like ours, if they can be reused in the wider private and public sector, can reduce that cost by 90%. So we're talking about massive wins in terms of the banking sector, the airline sector, the mobile network operator sector, and also local government and health services, too, can save a lot of money. This is a problem that everyone is facing, and increasingly so. Identity fraud is 41% of all fraud last year. There's £20 billion worth of fraud just in the public sector alone each year. And 84% of fraud... Identity fraud was online, so online identity fraud, massive problem now, and massive barrier to further innovation and um, the availability of more sophisticated interactions on the internet. So those are the four reasons why we're doing it, and now I'm going to explain how we think we, the government, could be so bold as to suggest that we are helping develop this market, which is a very unusual thing for a government to try to do. We're stimulating the market, we're doing it in these four ways. The, one way, the main way to accelerate gr the movement across from the left to the right on the map that I just showed you and accelerate the development of the market is to have open standards, which everyone can work to. Clear rules of the game, which everyone understands. So we in the government are setting the standards for identity assurance. These are... Oh, it's not working. There you go. These are the standards for identity proofing and verification of an individual. And they've been designed to meet the needs for central government, but also, if you're a bank and you follow these standards, you can meet your Know Your Customer anti-money laundering identity requirements. So these are applicable in the wider sector, and we think will form the, a good basis for the rules of the new economy that we're developing. We're aggregating demand across government, so instead of each department or service separately going to the market to try and get them to invest in building new capabilities, which doesn't work, we're aggregating demand. So, so far, we're at quite a small scale. We've got 275,000 People verified so far, they've logged in 700,000 times. We've got 13 government services using gov.uk verify. But by April next year, when we go from beta to live, we'll have probably about 30 services, we'll have five more certified companies on board, and we will start from that point on moving into the millions of users rather than hundreds of thousands. And by aggregating demand in that way, it presents a much more um, exciting opportunity for partners to come and invest in building their solutions. We're managing the commercial framework on behalf of the whole of government, and this is really important. So if you're a provider, or you want to be an identity provider, instead of having to negotiate separate contracts with each service, each of which have slightly different rules and make no sense as a coherent whole, we're trying to go to the market with one coherent ask. And we've published the framework that we've developed and that, that we signed in March. And we think that in, as the market develops, that could form the basis of the development of scheme rules in the market. And finally, we're supporting OIX projects. So the Open Identity Exchange is a really valuable partner for us. We're members of it, we're on the executive board, um, and we're supporting projects which will help accelerate the development of the market, both on the supply side and the demand side. And I think we'll probably come on to that in our panel discussion, because uh, some of the colleagues there are involved in those, some of those projects too. But to show you on the map of where I, where I was suggesting the market was going, OIX is active in all those areas that I've circled there. And this is how we're prioritising our investment in OIX, is to look at where do we think the next, where strategically, where's the important development opportunities in the market. And also working on the supply side, how do we ensure that what's being built here is actually going to be of some value. And by working with OIX in that way, we, like to give, we think we're giving commercial partners the confidence that government is going to find what they're doing useful. So that's how we're stimulating the market. 
So what? You might well ask. So the answer to so what, the first answer to so what is that right there is a massive field of very exciting opportunity. So if you're not already investing and active in this space, why the hell not, is my question. Um, and secondly, I really want to encourage you to get involved in this piece of work. OAX is doing a discovery exercise, as we call it. You might also want to think of it as a research piece where they're working with the private sector, all the different sectors, to understand much more deeply and thoroughly where are they at now in terms of how they do identity assurance, what do they cost them, where are they going, what are their needs, and how should we, the government, continue to work with the private sector to help develop this market in a way that's going to meet that wide range of needs. So this white paper was published earlier this week on oaxuk.org, um, and there's a questionnaire and a series of workshops, and we'd absolutely love you to come and take part in those, because we in the Cabinet Office are really eagerly watching the outcome of that. Um, I've done what I always do and gone really fast, but hopefully that means we've left more time for questions. <laughs>